Welcome everybody. If you're interested in learning more about one of the rarest downhill bikes on the planet, that's right, there's only gonna be 50 of these made. Make sure you stay tuned to this video to learn more about the collaboration project between Crestline Bikes and Cascade Components. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. Today we've got an exciting video. We are here at Mount Bachelor with Troiden and the Crestline RS205 downhill bike. Um, we are excited to get into some of the details and let you know who Crestline is and what they're all about. Troiden, give us a little pitch, man. What, where, what's your background and what is Crestline Bikes? Uh, Crestline is a project that myself and actually a friend of mine that you know as well, Mark Clemens, decided to start. And we were basically just in a position when we started working on the bikes where we just felt like there were some cool little things that we wanted to see on bikes that we weren't seeing. You know, we figured let's, let's start something and try and incorporate those things and do like a nice boutique brand that's not like, you know, just like everywhere in the market that, you know, has a bit more of a special feel and, and we just put a little bit of more passion and time into the bikes. All right, let's get a couple more laps in and we'll learn some more about the details in these bikes. Perfect. All right. So along with being one of the most rare downhill bikes out on the market, it is also one of the most adaptable. It, as you see it, in this build, it is a very purpose-built downhill machine. Um, it is a race bike, it likes to go fast. However, Cascade Components and Crestline worked together to make this a versatile bike. So some riders might be interested in squeezing a 29 inch rear wheel in there. They may wanna change those dropouts. They might also want to put in a different link, which will reduce the travel down from 205 millimeters to 175. There is tool and water bottle boss integration. As you can see, you've got a pretty long straight steer tube. So if you wanna run an axis dropper post, you've got a bike that you can pedal or race depending on what you're looking to do. So originally they started with a quest to make a downhillers e-bike. Um, however, they found that sourcing more products, batteries, drive units, et cetera, proved to be pretty difficult and delayed their project. It's very fun, a very cool bike. You might see some sneak peeks of that in this video, but what they decided to do instead is go back to their roots of downhill racing and come out with a project that they could knock out a little bit quicker. And now we have the RS205. So the RS is again a collaboration with Cascade Components. And if you are unfamiliar with Cascade Components, they are a company that is very into tuning and customizing suspension um, by modifying links for very popular existing bikes. And um, a lot of people would say improving them for more aggressive discerning riders. So Crestline partnered up with Jimmy, um, founder of Cascade Components to help really tune in the suspension kinematics, the link design, and make sure this bike did exactly everything they were hoping it would do. So the adjustability doesn't just stop at the rear end. Up front, riders will be able to fine tune the reach by a very large range. Um, and right now we have it set in the 475 mil reach, which is at 511, my preferred number. Um, but you have a big range that you can go. Troiden is uh, six foot three and he lengthens this bike out and he finds that it fits him very well. If you'd like to see the full geo numbers and all the other data, make sure you head to our website, thelonewolf.com, where we'll have a detailed write-up and charts available for you guys. So let's go hop on the chairlift with Troiden and learn a little bit about him and Crestline Bikes. So Troiden, how long have you been in the bike industry? Not terribly long, although it is, it is kind of, um, time is passing pretty quickly. Um, it's about nine years now. I started riding at about 36. Actually met Mark and Christian and those guys within my first year of riding and had to like learn how to catch up pretty quick, you know, just because of what they were doing. My first bike was a downhill bike and um, so got thrown in the deep end. Downhill bike um, project just uh, kind of came out of, out of uh, chatting to Jimmy from Cascade Components, chatting to Jeff from Worldwide and Nico while he was doing his project. Uh, we decided you know, we need to make one of these uh, bikes because we really just, it's the kind of heritage of what the brand is 
that. And then you obviously know where the name Crestline comes from. And for those who don't know, uh, Crestline is a secret. Can we still call it a secret? <laughs> it's a I kind of a try to keep it kind of a secret uh, downhill shuttle zone. Um, that is a very cool spot and some really awesome trails you might have seen in some uh, team and bike brand videos over the years. And uh, yeah, so the, the name Crestline is a little bit of an homage to, I guess, yeah, a really awesome shuttle zone. Now that we've got a few laps on the bike and learned some more about Crestline, let's talk some details with Troyden. All right, so Troyden, what were a couple of the key factors that you guys really wanted to have on this bike? So the main things on this bike that we were really focused on is the head tube being a one and a half inch straight head tube. So you can basically get plus or minus 10 mils of reach okay. with specific headsets. If you go all the way to 10, you do have to run an EC, so an external cup. Okay. But you can get, I believe about plus six with an internal, uh, with a, a zero stack cup. The next thing we really were focused on was um, the removable dropouts. So the removable dropouts are really nice because it gives us the flexibility of uh, shortening the chainstay. There's a good amount of room in there for us in order to, for us to be able to do that if we want to make it more playful. Lengthen it a bit if we want it to be um, catered to more of a real race bike, downhill, um, real stable. We can put a 29 inch rear wheel on. We can adjust the height of the rear axle to maintain the geo when we do that. We can also mess with the geo slightly if we want to set it up as a trail bike. So we can reduce the travel with a different link. We can then adjust the dropouts to make sure the bottom bracket's still in the right place. And by doing that, we can steepen the head angle a little bit and you can put a dual crown, a single crown fork on and have a, a trail bike, you know, with an axis dropper. Um, and I know some water bottle feed. So we, capabilities there. Yeah, so we threw uh, water bottle mounts in there and actually some tool mounts under the top tube. Oh yeah. And honestly, it's kind of nice when you're doing bike park labs just to have a water bottle on there. And it just, is. Yeah, so, you know, you don't have to use it, but it doesn't hurt to have it there, so. So as a race-ready downhill bike, in terms of suspension, kinematics, progression, feel, um, maybe what would you relate it to or where does it sit compared to other bikes? It's a linear progressive curve and okay. the reason why i'm saying that is it's progressive through the whole curve in as much of a linear way as possible so that the shock is dealing with the same kind of forces the whole time as you go through the travel and you're not getting like a crazy ramp up at the end and then the other interesting thing um, is the the axle path it basically starts in exactly the same place as it ends. So it basically does like a half circle curve. So it grows and then it shortens, right? So How whether- How far does it grow? So it, it grows about 13 mils. Okay. So it's, it's a decent amount, but not as much as like a high pivot bike. Mm -hmm. And the other nice thing about the pivot point is because it's a virtual pivot point, it moves. Whereas if you look at like, the fixed pivot, um, high pivot bikes, that pivot stays in one place. Mm -hmm. The nice thing about doing it with like a, I guess we're calling it virtual high pivot, um, obviously based off of the VPP, um, is that that point moves forwards and downwards as you go through the travel. Well, I gotta say, initial impressions on the couple of runs we've done so far have been really cool. Uh, normally I like to ride a bike I mean, we go through so many bikes that sometimes it takes a while to feel like you've got it right. Sure. And then some bikes you hop on and you're like, dude, this thing's like 90% there. Like, I'm just going to keep riding it until something really jumps out at me. Like Makes in this little... instance, I got to focus on what is causing that. And I feel like this is one of those bikes, right? Like, I feel like I'm, I'm 90% there and we really didn't do much at all. Like I touched the rebound twice and you know, we set up air pressure and this thing feels good to go, so. Yeah, well, that's a good sign. I've, I've always felt like when you start fighting a bike from the get-go to try and get it to feel a certain way, it yeah. doesn't seem to end up well, you know? No, no, you're just, you're either battling yeah. to trying to like open it up as much as possible to get that, that supple smoothness you need, or you're trying to dampen as much of it as possible to get it to hold, you know, and not blow through travel. And 
then you get on a bike like like this and it does both ends well and now it's just a matter of fine tuning it to really excel for your terrain and your riding style and i think that's where this thing falls in is like just putting it into more awkward situations at higher speeds as i'm getting more comfortable and um yeah just getting those final final those little, little tweaks one or two clicks here and there and this thing's going to be ready to go so nice all right well let's keep banging out some laps and come up with some more questions as we ride it perfect let's do it all right All right, so Troyden, thank you so much for driving down and bringing us this bike. We had a blast riding it today. Um, very impressed, really like minimal tuning. We had a lot of fun on the bike. It was pretty versatile on a pretty long pedally enduro trail to some jumps and proper downhill tracks, I would say. Nice. Um, what sort of timeline are you thinking for people being able to get this bike? Well, first, thanks so much for having us out here yeah. and, and for, you know, testing the bike and letting us know what you think. Um, as far as availability goes, I would say late September, we'll have some frames starting to trickle in. Um, and then probably through to like end of October, November, depending on how quickly they go. Uh, we may pre-sell them if there's a lot of demand. So, you know, but I can't predict that and I can't say what's going to happen, but, you know, keep your eyes out and um, we'll give you a link to the website and everything. So. Okay. And as far as availability goes, if, if people are watching this video, the frames are available, or I should say they've been released and are, are out there. They will, be, they will have been released and um, the website will be live and you will be able to get a frame today, depending on how quickly you get to the website. Right, yeah. The frames will come in in like very small batches because they're being laid up in the R&D center um, of the factory, which we were kind of happy about because those are guys that really know what they're doing as far as lap goes. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason why they'll then trickle in is because obviously there's limited resources there as opposed to a full production run. Right. Um, so it was the way we got to do this bike within under a year as well. Yeah, um, a low quantity a in low an R&D facility. Ex okay. Exactly, exactly. And um, obviously for people who may have questions, concerns, doubts about an unheard of company having their frames made it is being made in an R&D facility that makes a lot of other bikes that people are familiar with. So it's, it's being made in a very reputable factory. I could stand here and list off the names of, you know, a lot of bikes that you and I have ridden, right. that you have tested, that people know in the market, but I don't want to, you know, sure. I don't know how those brands feel about yeah. that kind of stuff being mm -hmm. divulged. Um, the factory is called VIP Composites. Uh, they have facilities in Myanmar, uh, Vietnam, and China, and we're in um, the Vietnam facility. People can do a bit of research if they want to go and see, yeah. um, but it's a very reputable factory that's made a lot of bikes that you've seen on the World Cup downhill circuits to free ride competitions to, mm -hmm. so the guys know what they're doing. And, sure. and we strategically chose a factory like that to eliminate that kind of doubt as a new brand. Okay. You know, So again, with our kinematics, you know, we used Cascade components. They're a reputable brand that's been making aftermarket links for these platforms and people like what they're doing, they know what they're doing. So we've tried to eliminate all those kind of unknowns right. in the bike because we know we're a new brand. So, yeah. you know, it is it is a leap for someone to, so we've tried to eliminate as much of the, that concern as possible. Awesome. And um, I, I think it's probably worth saying as a boutique brand with some small batch R&D built frames, uh, these guys are open to hearing some feedback on doing some really elite dream worthy builds. Am I right? So frames will be available in very limited quantities, but they're not opposed to going out and sourcing some really high end components. So if you'd be interested in having a Crestline factory build option, let us know in the comments down below. Troyden, thanks again, nice man. One. Good luck. I don't think you're going to have a problem moving these things. They're sweet. Well, so. thanks again for having us, man. It's been a blast. Awesome. Riding Congrats. And uh, make sure you check out Crestline Bikes. Thank you guys for coming along, and we'll see you in the next video.
Nah, I think we're good.